Okay, today we're going to modify a uh, servo for continuous rotation. As you can see at the moment, my servo only goes around to the two stops. The one I'm going to be uh, modifying today is a Futaba S3003, um, which I just salvaged from an old plane. I didn't actually know I had these. Um, but I had a quick look on the internet and it looks very simple. So I'm just going to make a video to show you how to make this into a continuous rotation servo. I'm not going to do the solder method. I'm going to do the gear modification method. I think it's easier and perhaps less prone to problems. So the first thing you want to do is to take off the servo control arm. Put that to one side. And we're going to remove the four screws underneath. You don't need to take these out because you don't need to remove the bottom part of the servo. So we're just going to loosen each of these to free up the top. One, two, and three. And our fourth one here. So once we've done that, we take off the gear from the top and you should be left with some gears. Now you may find that the gear on some stays in the um, top part here, in which case you just want to remove it because that then put that to one side. You don't need the top just now so put that also to one side and we're just going to look at the main gear so you can also take off this one here. If you find your spindle has actually come loose it's probably best just to pop it back into the servo itself like so. So remove your main gear, this one here and move the rest of it to one side at the moment. Now on this main gear you want to be careful not to get any of the grease onto any of the gears uh, or rather bits into the grease on any of the gears because it will shorten the life. But on this here, I don't know if you can see, there is a small latch that stops this from turning completely round either way and we're going to remove that and what I'm going to use is a little saw um, where I just cut down from the first ridge and then we're going to cut across You should find most of it's removed. You may want to just tidy up anything else that's left. Um, namely, there might be a couple of small points on the side you just need to tidy up. Make sure it's got no plastic filings on it. <gasps> and it's free from as much grease or, or dirty grease as you can find. So now we've done that with the main gear. The other thing we need to do, using I use a four millimeter drill bit, is to drill out the center to re take out these little notches on the side. So you don't use a drill itself, just use the drill bit by hand and it can be a bit difficult to get started at first but you need to remove those notches so the servo can spin, or the gear can spin freely it can be very tricky to get started Uh, sometimes it's worth just wrapping something around so you don't cut your fingers to shreds. After a while you should feel the uh, notches give way and then you just want to make sure that each bit has been rounded off. 
And you don't want to make this too large. Uh, it still needs to sit on the top of the servo gear. But you might be able to see now that well, not completely done yet. <laughs> you might see that it's more rounded now. Hard to see because there's been some notches on there, but that should do it. Now, the other thing you want to do is use a very small drill bit. I'm using one roughly the same size as my precision screwdriver, um, and this is so you can adjust the zero point of the rotation for this servo. So again using your hand and from the top down start drilling. This one's a bit easier than the other because there's nothing to catch on. You want to be careful of the thread already in the top so that you don't damage the screw thread for fastening the control arm onto the main gear. After a while, you should be able to get the drill bit through. And a good way to test is to stick your screwdriver and make sure you can adjust. Can you see? So I can adjust a, the potentiometer without having to take apart all the gears again. So again, Make sure your work surface is clear, and that's the main gear done. Now to the servo, and what we need to do is there's a potentiometer here. You want to set that as roughly as you can to the zero point. Now I find that that position there is most of these, if not all, where it's pointing straight across to the main gear. Um, that seems to be the default zero location. Now what we're going to do is you take our saw again, and we're going to cut a notch across the top there so we can adjust it with a screwdriver like so this is quite fine this one so I'm gonna have to I'm chopping my thumb and finger apart but this uh, Drill is, or this blade is quite fine, so I need to do a couple of incisions to make it wide enough. And you can take your screwdriver and just give it a quick test. And we can adjust that now. And that's most of the hard work done. You can see we now have a groove across that we can adjust with a screwdriver. Now it's a case of putting it all back together. So we pop our main gear on, and a quick test here is to turn the main gear and see if it adjusts the center point here. So popping it on and turning it should move freely, but that should stay where it was, as you can see. So if I would just try that the other way, and it's staying put. So that's a good sign that it's gonna work properly. We touch our main gear. And we pop our other gears in place. You may find you just need to... adjust the main gear when you put this last one on until it pushes down firmly. Then it's a case of popping the 
cover back on and screwing it back up. Now you do want to set this to its zero point, so I'm just going to put a control arm to highlight the direction it's moving. And I have an Arduino board here that I have a simple program to just send 1500 micro second fluctuations to the servo. So let me just connect this back up to the new one. It's very simple, connected to a couple of the five point, uh, five volt power and ground, and then the signal wire goes to the signal wire of the servo. Uh, let me just connect up. some power and as you can see the servo is now rotating continuously I'm just going to load up my sketch And so now it's sending 1500, I think it's microseconds, but I can actually adjust the potentiometer in here so it's got a zero point. Now you do want to make sure it's not twitching. on the servo. Once it stops moving, if you hold it tight you can usually feel when it twitches. And we can then attach our servo control arm and we have a continuous modification or zero blah blah blah. We now have a continuous rotation servo that I can just show you the, the different speeds you'll be able to get. Just uploading a different sketch. So you can see very slow and this is just slowly incrementing the speed of the rotation. So you can have quite precise control And it can go relatively quickly, but this has to be the easiest servo modification I've ever done to any servo. There's no soldering, there's no trying to fit extra resistors into the circuit. Voila!